English. Yes, brother. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, doctor. Where are you? Sorry, I cannot see you. Uh, I'm in a wheelchair, so I cannot stand up. Okay, no, no problem. No problem. I saw you, brother. Yes, brother. Okay, thank Wa you very Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah. My name is Frank Tirabayai, and uh, I'm a Christian. I just have a simple of the question. Is the other religion is allowed to go to Makkah or Medina? If they're not doing for a haji. Thank you very much. The brother asked a common question that if the non-Muslims, why are they not allowed in the two holy cities of Makkah and Medina? And brother, today's topic was misconceptions about Islam. The 20 most common questions asked by non-Muslims regarding Islam. And this is the ninth most common question asked by non-Muslims regarding Islam. So why are non-Muslims not allowed in the two holy cities of Makkah and Medina? Every country has its own cantonment area or the military area of the country. For example, if you are a citizen of Indonesia, so you are not allowed in the military bounded areas in Indonesia. You cannot fight and say, why am I not allowed? Because this area is the cantonment area of Indonesia. Similarly, the cantonment area of Islam are the two holy cities of Makkah and Medina. Only those people who believe in one God alone and who believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, are allowed in the cantonment area. For example, before you want to enter a country, you require a visa. And one of the most difficult countries in the world to get visa is USA. So before you want to enter any country, you need to apply for the visa. And you need to fulfill the conditions. And when I happen to go to Singapore, on the immigration form, it is mentioned death to drug traffickers. So, you cannot say death penalty, such a barbaric law. If you want to enter Singapore, you have to abide by the rule of the country. Similarly, the cantonment area of Islam are the two holy cities of Makkah and Medina. Only those people who are ready to believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, are allowed in this cantonment area. And if you believe in one God alone and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, then no one can stop you from entering the two holy cities of Makkah and Medina. I hope that answers the question. Thank you very much. Brother. Yes. I would like to ask you, have you read something regarding Islam? Uh, not really much. Brother, what's your background? Are you a Christian? Are you a Hindu? I'm Christian. Okay. Brother, did you hear the talk wherein my father said the similarities between Islam and Christianity? And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, there is not a single unequivocal statement, not a single unambiguous statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says, I am God, or where he says, worship me. In fact, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28, my father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, my father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 29. Number 28, I cast out devil with the spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20. I with the finger of God cast out devil. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just. I will, but the, but the brother, he's a Muslim. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a Muslim. Brother, I would like to ask you, do you believe Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he's God or he's a messenger of God? I believe it, Jesus Christ is a messenger and God. MashaAllah. Brother, I would like to ask you, do you believe in one God? Yes. MashaAllah. So you believe in one God, you believe Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he is the messenger of God. I would like to ask you, do you believe 
Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is the last and final messenger of God. Do you believe that? I don't know because I never learned about it. Brother, if you heard the talk, there are several references mentioned in the Bible, whether it be the Old Testament or the New Testament, prophesizing about the coming of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It is mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18. It is mentioned in the Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. In Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is prophesied by name. It's also mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 29, verse number 12. In the New Testament, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is prophesied. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hears shall he speak. He shall glorify me. He shall to show you things to come. So this prophecy is referring to no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Okay. Thank so you. brother, when it is clearly mentioned in the Bible, in the Old Testament and the New Testament about the coming of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So do you believe in the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? I just understand about it, but I don't believe it. Okay, brother, inshallah, you can do research. And I would request you to read the glorious Quran with translation. And inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you hidayah and get you closer to the street. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, sir.